bug. Okay. Then it's thing. Hi, how are you today? Uh, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm got an issue here, but you know, I'm doing all right for the moment. Okay, gotcha. Um, so my name is Sierra Fountain. I'm one of the lawyers here. This is my partner. I'm Kate Tunison. Thank you for meeting with us today. Sorry it can't be in uh, person, but um, Zoom will do, I guess, for now. It's all right. The pleasure's all mine, as long as y'all can help me out here. Okay, we're going to try our hardest. Um, so we want to go ahead and say that our consultation fee is, fee is free, so this whole conversation is just going to be free, and if they're doing it being fees later, we'll discuss it later on. Honey, funny is not my worry. I just want to see if we can get this figured out. Okay, gotcha. Um, and is, is it okay if I take notes on our meeting today? I actually prefer you do so. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, so um, are you from the area or...? Uh, you're talking about just the general Atlanta area? Yeah. Yeah, I actually grew up quite up the street on the uh, north side of Atlanta, right outside of the perimeter. We don't know the area real well. I was trying to, you know, get... <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got a little puppy in the back. A little bit closer to the city <laughs> so that I could get to work a little bit easier. Okay, gotcha. Do you have a dog? <laughs> I do, and she only likes to talk when I try to get work done. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. So what brings you in today? Well, you see, I am, um, I've been trying to get this apartment. Well, honestly, we don't even care if it's an apartment. The apartment's just where we're having the situation at. We're trying to move to Decatur because they just really got this real nice school that is, um, it's like this inclusionary school in the middle of the city, and it's it would just be a real benefit to us because we have two daughters and one of my daughters, she's um, she's feeling, she, well, she's not feeling the type of way. She is, she's disabled. And we tell her it's more of a feeling so that like she feels like, you know, she's not any different than anyone else. It's just, you know, something else going on. But she uses a wheelchair and she has a, an intellectual disability. And there's a, it's not a school that's right there in Indicator where both of them can go. Because right now, both of my daughters are going to separate schools. And it's really just cutting into cutting into our time to go get them. We're spending hours a day just trying to drop them off or pick them up where we could be productive. And on top of that, my daughter just feels real isolated. I mean, they don't even have each other to be next to. So I have this friend, <clears throat> well, to be more particular, my wife, she has this friend who um, told her about this guy who was renting out an apartment. So we went and we contacted him. Let me see it. Let me check my notes because I actually wrote all this down. So I figured it'd be pretty important to you all. Perfect. Um, let's see. But we um we called this fella. His name was it was Goodman. It was um I don't Martin Goodman. We called. We gave him a shout out. We called him, and we began to talk about the situation in the apartment and everything. He was being in telling us about it. It's just nice, you know, grass, the grassy area lined with trees, real safe. It was just you know. 10 minutes drive within my works within my, my wife's work the whole night was really really perfect he was telling us that we had this three he had this three bedroom apartment available which is you know perfect two daughters and a married couple all the rooms work out just perfectly you know this nice apartment in a quiet environment we said that we'd like to take a look and he told us well he didn't particularly tell us he just the way he said it really made it seem like the apartment was ours for the taking once we got if we were to go up there and take it so we went ahead and set up a meeting and we um actually later that day we decided to go up there because we're just too too darn excited we were ready to go ahead and move in we've been searching for so long and as we get there i guess it was kind of a bit later in the day because um the guy mr goodman he was pretty much in sweatpants i guess the day was over so, right so we had to go visit him at his personal home and we knocked him at the store here and he was just kind of like you know uh well let me be more clear i ended up I was still back at the car. My daughter, my wife and her and the kids were up at the door. All I saw was really the door closing. And my wife said that they said that he said that we look different than signing on the phone. So we kind of just left and, you know, kind of deflated because, you know, we were real excited. We had this place locked down that we can move into and all our worries would be over with. And we kind of just went back to our home. Um, just the next day we went shopping in the area again just to go check it out actually over the next few days it wasn't just one day we saw this because we looked out in the window and there was a vacancy sign still there 
each day that we went by. So we figured, you know, maybe their last contract might have dropped out. So we um, went ahead and gave them a call. No answer. Gave them another call. Still no answer. Left some messages. And we just ne really never got a fallback. We, um, we aren't necessarily really wanting to look out to litigation because we're just really busy people. And what, you know, we have to deal with our, with our children, especially helping out the little one with her disabilities. And then my wife, she's a, she's a, uh, she's an assistant to a doctor out here. So she's really busy herself. And then me with my work, we just don't have a lot of time to do it unless it's worth it. So I guess my question is, would you guys think it's, do you think you can get us something that would be worth the stress of working through the litigation of this? Okay. I definitely think that we can help you, um, but we're going to ask you a few questions, just uh, follow-up questions to make sure that we understand um, what's going on in your case. Also, I'm very sorry to hear um, about that apartment guy's um, behavior towards you. That is in your well, it's not your fault. You don't have to be sorry about it. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, and what, we are so sorry about that. We're going to do everything we can to help you fix that. I'm going to go ahead and just try and recount the story for you and make sure that we have it accurate. Is that okay? That sounds absolutely perfect. Perfect. Okay. So from what I'm understanding is you and your wife are trying to get an apartment. Correct. You have a disabled child and you want it to be able to be like handicapped accessible. Correct. Um, so you're looking for a place in Decatur because of the school, right? Both of your kids can go to school there. You're right on the point. Okay. So when you went to visit this person, they were blatantly rude or possibly even discriminatory. I can't tell you exactly how they were because it was my wife who spoke to him. I really, again, I saw just the telling of the door closing in the face. But the way it was described is he, he just, he slightly he sounded different than we looked. And I just don't really know how, how to take that or what that could possibly mean. And once you tried to reach back out after that, there was only one interaction, correct? Yes, the only, it's only, only the, well, I guess there's technically two since we showed up by this door, but we only had the one phone call. Okay, and then the one face-to-face. -face. Correct. Gotcha, okay. Um, so the reason you're interested in this apartment is because there's no else, like there's no other vacancies in the area for homes or apartments and you're trying to get in the school system and well, there are vacancies around the town but we're just really the only one that has you know the, the accessibility is for my daughter and you know she's in a wheelchair she's uh we have to have doors that are wide enough we have to have the, the ramps available to us we have to have the available space in the bathroom so that she could take showers comfortably and not have to worry about fitting her whole wheelchair in there all that type of stuff this is the one that we've been lined out so we're kind of upset that it didn't work out Right, I totally understand that. So this apartment that um, you were looking at, it was wheelchair accessible? Correct, from what we can tell so far at least. We never really got to go inside, but from what we could tell off the back. Right, okay. And um, so when you went to visit this apartment, was it a scheduled thing, <clears throat> your whole family together? Um, we scheduled an appointment to go check it out, actually the same, we scheduled it for the same day. And you brought your whole family with you, correct? Correct. Okay, including your wife. Well, we can't. We again, we were working, so the wife and kids got there a little bit before me, and I showed up a little bit later and was walking in. But all of us were there. Okay, gotcha. But you drove separately. Yes. Okay. And so when you arrived, your wife was talking to the landlord, and you and as you were walking up, you saw the tail end of. The conversation and the door slam in her face. Correct. Seemed like the conversation just ended. Okay. Gotcha. And um, I don't mean to get too personal here, but um, the race of your wife, what would that be by chance? Uh, she's a Caucasian. Okay. Okay. And did the landlord see you walking up? As um, he, he didn't quite see me walking up. I, well, I wouldn't assume so. I really only saw his hand once I was getting towards the door. Okay, so we're looking probably at discrimination towards your child, I would say. Because um, I thought maybe there might be a little bit of racial discrimination based off of a biracial relationship, because unfortunately that's pretty common in our town, and I hate to see it, but we're working to help fix that. But worse towards your child, who I'm sure you love so deeply and would do anything. And I'm absolutely, sure. I do. I would hate, I teach my children every day to treat everyone exactly how they want to be treated. So the thought that anyone could be treating them differently is absolutely unacceptable. 
I totally understand that. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, so on the phone, when you were um, having a conversation with the landlord, did you um, specify that your daughter was um, in a wheelchair? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. And was there an application process at all that you had done? We haven't even gotten to that far yet. We just wanted to go in to check it out. The way he was talking on the phone, the place was ours to take. So we figured we'd go in and check it out before we signed ourselves down to anything. Right, as any logical person would, because why would you sign something you've never seen? You never exactly. Seen yeah, I totally understand, and I do that all the time. Unfortunately, I hate moving, but, you know. It's a fact of life. You have to do it sometimes, you know. It takes all day, and you get real sweaty out here in the, in the Georgia summer, but. You really, oof, you do. I hate it. But we'll discuss that later. <laughs> um, so when it came to this process, when you called initially, it was just you on the phone. It wasn't your wife or anyone, right? Did I say it was me? I'm sorry. I meant to say it was my wife who called. I was, it was on speakerphone. Okay, gotcha. So you overheard, but your wife is the one who called. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Um, when you showed up at the apartment, I know you guys arrived separately, and you saw the tail end of the door being slammed. Um, you said you later tried to reach out again. Was it the same day? Oh, the next day we saw the for sale sign. We really just kind of waited a couple of days before we called them because maybe, you know, they just forgot to take out, they just forgot to take out, you know, take the sign off. And then, you know, a few days later, it's still there. So we gave them a call. Um, so after you saw that sign, you gave them a call. There was no answer. Did you leave multiple? um voicemails we left two or three of them after after four or five calls okay and when you made these calls did you specify that you were the same person who had come to visit yes ma'am okay um after the um conversation between the landlord and your wife did she seem upset after she got the door slammed in her face well she seemed a little dazed and confused the, the whole ordeal seemed to go down really fast i don't think she really knew what to what to think of the whole process um, and so can I ask where you guys are um, living now? Are you still having to commute really far and you're... We're up in Beaufort. I, we, we both work in the city. It's at least an hour and a half tribe every day. In, including getting your um, daughters to school or that's... Not even including that. Just the traffic alone of going down 85 to get to the city is an hour and a half. I'm so sorry to hear that. So when you're... Um, Dropping your daughters off at school, how long does that take for you to leave your house, drop them off at school, and get to work? It can take us around probably 30 to 40 minutes for each child, depending on how early we leave. Plus the hour and a half for you guys to get to work. On top of the hour and a half it takes us to get to work. We okay. usually have to split up car duties. Like one of us takes one of the kids and the other one takes the other. Otherwise, we'll never make it on time. Right. It's a lot of gas money. Bless your heart. Exactly. Well, the commute from um, this apartment that you and your wife were interested in um, living in, how far would that have been from your work and from the girls' school? Well, for me, it probably would have been about, still been a good 20 minutes, but you know, a lot better than an hour and a half. For my wife, it was just 10. The girls, they were fairly close too. I want to say it was 10 to 15 minutes as well. Yeah, and for this school, is it a requirement that you live close to the school in order to be in it? I don't know that it's a requirement for the school per se, but I do know a lot of the towns, a lot of the schools around town have to have a requirement that you be district inside the school before you, okay. before you know, you go there. We didn't really want to take any chances. That's definitely something we can help you look into just to be sure before. Absolutely. I appreciate any help you can give us. Yeah, of course, we're here to help and that's what we do. Um, so, this school, you said it was a school for both your children, right? So it has both special needs. They may both be allowed to go to this school. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how old were your kids again? Sorry, I can't hear you. Broke up a little bit. How old were your kids again? <laughs> Sorry, six and seven. Very young, very cute. Unfortunately enough, they don't have a whole lot of understanding of anything going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you do decide to move forward with um, case and uh, let us represent you, it's going to be really time consuming. And I know that you're already busy with 
work and your wife is busy with her job and you're busy taking care of your little girls. Um, but just to give you a heads up, it will be a little bit of a time commitment and we, we won't be able to settle it, you know, right away. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a mindset or do you think you could break down what kind of commitment we will be committing to here? Yeah, of course. So what we're looking at is the Federal Housing Act. So it specifically bans any type of discrimination against disabled or handicapped people is what it says in the specific quote, but we'll lean more towards disabled. Um, so any type of housing that is denied on that basis is immediately barred by the or by federal government and we can try it based on those grounds. So we're looking at suing your landlord, but first and foremost, we have to prove that it happens. So doing that, we would have to A, investigate your claim individually, and then also back check every single one that he's had to compare it. So that's gonna be a bit of a long process and it's gonna get very personal. It's gonna ask you a lot of questions about your life. It's gonna ask you a lot of questions about your daughter, her disabilities and all that she has to go through and why you're moving in the area. It's gonna be extensive and it could take a few years, but we hope for the best and we're always gonna hope that it's shorter, but it could take a few years if it has to. Do you have any idea what my daily schedule will look like? So your daily schedule would be answering us. <laughs> it's not gonna be an everyday thing that we're calling you because when it comes to it, it's going to be on us to make sure that we can get everything done. Now, does that mean that you're clear? No, it means that we need your cooperation. We need you to answer the phone when we call or schedule a time to call us back. We need you to email us, check in, submit any records that we may ask and be able to file things with us if we need you to. We're going to try and handle the brown work of it, but we always will need your help as well. This is a teamwork. It's not just us. All right. Do you guys think that the compensation we could win would be worth all of this, in your honest opinion? Um, I mean, I can't. We're not going to promise anything. Um, and we're going to need to do some more uh, fact checking with your landlord. Um, we need to look into his tenants that he has, his records of his tenants, and see if this is a reoccurring problem that um, people have had with him. Um, and if it is, then I think we have a good case, um, but I'm not going to promise, I'm not going to give you a number and promise you anything because obviously that changes um, based like case to case. But um, I understand that. Thank you. I, I appreciate you being honest with me. You're welcome. But um, yeah, we will need to do some um, research and look into the landlord um, and figure out if this has happened before this is a common issue with him. So one thing I am going to try and make clear before we do this is we will likely have to interview your daughter um, in order to get her perspective. I don't know if it's gonna be completely relevant or not. Um, actually, I would disagree with that. I think it is gonna be completely relevant. So we're gonna to have to have you and her in here, probably your mo her mother as well, sister, just so we can get a full recount of everyone's individual perspectives and also just meet your daughters as people and try and really get a grasp on your family so that we can better understand the situation. Is that okay? How invasive will these questions to my daughter be? As of right now, I can't really tell you. Um, we'll try and keep it as on topic as possible. Um, we might have to get her medical records and ask her or you as her parents since she is so young. Um, more about her disabilities, where they stem from, etc. Um, that's just something, it'll be a while before we get to that point, but I would like for you to be aware of that possibility. All right, as long as they're not, you know, and terribly intrusive, I think we can be okay with that. Yeah, and we will do our best to object to anything that is just out of hand or off guard because it's not necessarily important to the case at the time, okay? Absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna go over our fees. My partner will do that with you. Um, we, um, we, you're not gonna have to pay us up front, um, but if we do settle the case and win some money, um, we take compensation from that the earnings of the settlement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how much of the compensation is it? 45% um, of 
the total compensation and then you and your family get the rest. Yeah, that's only if we make it to litigation. If it's prior to litigation, then we're only gonna take 37%. Okay, I'm gonna have to talk this over with my wife, but I think we may have a deal, but I gotta make sure with the, with the, with the lady back home. Okay. Absolutely, we completely understand that. Yeah, and we are completely available by phone or email. Our assistants will give you our cards at the end. You can reach us at any time. Um, they'll even give you our personal numbers if you need to reach us directly because, like I said, this is teamwork and we're going to work together on this, okay? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate all y'all's help. Thank you for meeting with us, and I'm so sorry to hear about um, this issue that you had. Well, it's all right. Hopefully, we can work out a remedy here. Yeah, sounds good. We look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you.